So, how do you want to do, do you want to work on it for a little bit, then I'll go over the planes, or how do you want to do that? If we get the planes finished, you can go back and clean up your routing. Should we review how to do that? Um, are you on the same computer? Are you in the, are you in the layout program or the routing program? You can't be on that one. You need to be in layout. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not why you can't open it. Click the W. Once again, I hope I don't offend you. I kind of speak passionately. Um, speak passionately. Well, I, 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 I grew up to be in a layout. I was a cosplay. I, I, I went, I was doing a few girl classes. I went to summer camp. Uh, I gotta get going. Which is quite new. But uh, they, uh, they. Oh, wow. Is that, is that, is that what that is? Great show. EEG, uh, which is doing great things. But wow. the summer camp, the summer camp, we, we have working bus, so they form two battalions out of the whole population of summer camp. Oh, wow. Eight people from the Oh, wow. I was a kid. Well, they want to put AI into our so website now. It's like a new thing. So I was a computer show. <laughs> Yeah. Seen the Terminator movies many times, and it was once artificial intelligence connected to our machines that keep it separate. Well, last thing we need is a computer thinking for itself. But we all John, we all have to. Well, I know that's the scary thing. Self-driving cars. What do you think? They, they, they think for themselves. Yeah, that's the scary thing. What people think are. <laughs> Somebody very famous is quoted to say that AI will kill the planet. Yep, that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah, Okay, um, so what I want to do is I want to go over the complete layout for for planes again. Is that okay in printing? Is that okay? But I need someone's file. It didn't save mine on the desktop, so I saved it last time. <laughs> you don't want my file. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so file, open. Okay, good. Okay, let me turn the lights down and let's go with this, okay? Okay. 
you see okay there? Okay. What I want to do is I want to go over everything we did the other day again. I want to do repetition, but I want to make sure we fully understand how to do this all. So even though you are not finished routing, I want you to stop and let's work together on this, okay? Now, how many of you have pulled any of your caps onto your board? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unroute some of this, so it might be just a little repetition, you know, for you. Hopefully it'll help you out a little bit. So give me just a second here, and let me kind of do this here. Okay. Okay, this is where I want to be right here. So, can you let me see if I can get my position of my dot? Is that a little better? Okay. Now, number one thing, remember when we do a cam plane, it's a photo reverse of what you see. If you see, if you draw a line on there, it's photo reverse, you aren't going to see that line, so it's going to take it off. But if you don't see something, there's going to be something there. Okay, so if you don't see anything, your cam plane is a solid slab on top of it. A solid slab. Okay, and so if I want to split that into two different planes, I can draw a 2D line down the middle of it, and when I run my cam plane, there's going to be a separation there because it's a photo reverse. You always split that piece of copper into two pieces copper. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do on this board, the very first thing is, I'm going to first of all put this out here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at our raw board. Now, we're going to make a border around our power planes, just your power planes, not your routing planes, just your cam planes. And your cam planes are going to be for your power and ground, so they can actually be for any net you really want on it. There's a whole bunch you won't need to do it. So we're going to draw, first of all, all around here, a 2D line. Go, uh, we're going to use a rectangle for a minute. We're going to draw a 2D rectangle, and then we're going to make it 30,000 wide. So every time you do this, you need to make that rectangle 30,000 width for your line weight. Does that make sense, everybody? So just make sure you remember 30,000. So what we're going to do here now is let's go to setup right here. So setup and layer definition. See layer definition here? See it, layer definition. So right now, we have a six-layer board, don't we? We have layer one, which is our top. We have inner, 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 and bottom, right? Now, all of you have been able to route this board on the top and the bottom, right? So all we need now is we need a power plane and a ground plane. So we only need four layers. So what we're going to do is use layers one and two, five and six. We just aren't going to use three and four. Does that make sense? The problem is once you add layers to a board, you cannot delete layers. I've tried to get that changed for years, but they don't want to change it. Because, um, but, but you don't have to use them. That's the thing. So it's not a big deal because you need them. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? So, what we want to do now is let's turn off. Okay, so see layer two? See where it says PL? If you click on layer two, 
you want to make sure it's cam plane right here. Okay, now see this uh, option icon right here? I'm in cam plane, right? If I click on this one here, that box goes away. The only way I can get that box up here is if I highlight it and make it into a cam plane. Because remember, those power and grounds were coming through as a via and it's exiting on certain layers. And that's how we assign certain layers to where it's exit right here. Okay, so everyone should have layer two as a cam plane and layer five as a cam plane. Does everyone have that okay? Okay, so now let's go ahead now and it might be easier for you if we turn everything off but layer two. If you turn layers on and off as well, it's pretty easy, right? So let's just go into our setup, display colors. I'm going to turn layer one off. Three, four, five, and six. Okay, so I just have layer two showing. Does that make sense to everybody? That's where I want a ditch going around the outside. Just think about this. If you had a piece of a slab of copper right here. And you, you shear this off into multiple boards. Where's the copper right now? Right on the edge, isn't it? If this was a big piece of copper, and let's say you cut there, there, and there, across there, each one of these, let's say that was a board, your copper would be right to the edge, wouldn't it? If you just sheared it, right? So if you take that board out and shove it and hit the metal stud, what's going to happen to the board? going to short out. So what we want to do is we want to create a border around our board. Remember, it's photo reverse. So if I see a line there, it's going to delete the copper from going out to the edge of the board. Okay, are, are you fully clear on that? So what let's do on layer two now is let's go make sure this is on layer two because we want to be drawn on layer two. Right there, I'm going to go to the drafting toolbar and see right here, I want to draw a rectangle. So just draw a rectangle in here, just like that. Now, if you don't get the rectangle to show up the first time, if you keep on drawing it, the rectangle's there somewhere. You have a lot of rectangles to hide and delete if you don't do it. So we good there with the rectangle? <clears throat> Who said no? So now you've got traces on layer two, right? They don't belong on layer two. But so right here, right click rectangle. Okay. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to make that rectangle 30 thousandths wide. So just click on the side of it and then right click and go to properties. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on here. Right click, select shape. And it'll pick the whole thing. Then right click and go to properties. That's what I want to do. See where it says width right there? Change that width to 30. We good there? So we have a rectangle that the line is 30 thousandths wide. Okay? Shape, right click, properties. Yeah, you just do an extra. Okay. 
Okay, we're, we're drawing on layer two, right? Remember I told you, you've got to draw on that cam plane. You, you turned all the other layers off, right? Everybody get changed to 30, okay? Okay. Now, you see down here at the bottom where it says G is something, mine says G5. What does yours say? Do they all say G5? G5. If it doesn't, just type in G5 and they'll switch it. See right here where I'm pointing to? See the G right there? That stands for grid. If I type in G10, what's my grid now? Just G5, we'll change it back to 5. So it's just a modeless command to change your snap around. Okay? Now, let's do one more thing to maybe make this a little bit easier to see. <clears throat> this is your board outline right here. Okay? What we're going to do right now is I'm going to make that thinner. Okay? Right now, it's like 10 to 12 inch wide. To help you understand exactly where we're putting this 2D line. So what we're going to do now is click on, on there, right click, um, Okay, never mind. We'll just do it with the spider. Okay. So I want you to zoom in here. Do not pick the vertex here. Come in here, grab an edge, drag it down to where it sits right in the middle of that line right there. Does that make sense? And then hit the up arrow key five, three times, 5, 10, 15, and then click it. So where did it put the edge of that 30,000th line? right in the middle of my board outline line. Does that make sense? So right now, I have a barrier now of 30,000, right? Grabbing this here, see right in the center, right? Yeah. 5, 10, 15, click. Right in the center, now we're done. That's what we're doing. That's all we have to do. Now we have to do that on all four sides, don't we? So go ahead and move that around so I can do this right here. 5, 10, 15, hit home, and do it up here in the top corner, right here. 5, 10, 15. Pull this one in here, 5, 10, 15, click there. So I have a 30,000 line going around that piece of copper that's going to keep away and the copper. It's going to end right here now. My board's going to be sheared right here, so I have a barrier here now, right? So if it hits any metal, it won't short out. So that's what that line is for. You'll do that on, again, every power plant. Okay, now we have to do that on layer 5 also. So now you go back to your display colors, turn layer 2 off, turn layer 5 on, and do the same thing to layer 5. Does that make sense now? So go to setup, display colors, turn layer 2 off, and turn layer 5 on. Okay, now question for you. What if you see some traces on these layers? Well, like, I 
I see my incomplete of traces. Right, right. But if you physically see traces on that one, if you see connections, and that, then you have to get those off that plane, that plane layer and put on a routing layer. So you have a plane layer and a routing layer. You, you good with that? Okay, so let's draw our 2D rectangle around here now. So what do I have to do here now? Make sure you're on what layer? Five, right there. That's what I'll be drawing on. So let's draw us a rectangle right there. Draw your rectangle here, and then pick an edge right here, select the shape, and then go to properties and change, that's already 30, so we're okay, right? And then you come down here now, zoom in here, grab this over here, go to the center and go 5, 10, 15. 5, 10, 15. Do you see why I set it at 30 now? Bring this down here and go 5, 10, 15. 5, 10, 15, just like that. So we have our borders on to keep the coffee from getting out so we shear that board off right now. That's the main thing. Okay? Okay, now, what we got to do here now is we've got to turn all of our layers back on. So go to Setup, Display Colors, and let's just turn everything on here now. Okay? So now, we get it this, up to this point. Did you get your other one drawn on later five? Right, right, right. So go to setup, 
this code can go against the trim off and then trim later to slide off. Okay. So put the foam face down. Place the foam face there. You like this? Great shape. It's heavy for you, right? Well, of course, it's probably they want that to be sturdy. This is why you want it sturdy, right? Okay, now, as we place these parts, if you have traces on them, that's okay for right now. We'll fix them. But don't try to fix them while I'm telling you what to do. Does that make sense? Otherwise, we'll never get finished with this. Okay? So, what you should have on your board, you should have two big caps right here. And you should have four smaller caps. Does everyone have that? So the six caps. We okay with that? Okay. So the two big caps go up in this corner here. Two of the small caps come here and two of them over here. Now, question for you. Can you see all this X right here? kind of hard to differentiate what those colors actually are, right? We have ground and we have a power here, correct? So what I'm going to show you is we're going to delete some nets from some layers right now. We're going to get rid of that X. It's going to show us a solid color, though, so we can see what it is. So we don't have to say, is that the same color? So we have to put it back on when we're all finished. Are you with me? So let's go to setup. I'm going to go to setup. Layer definition right here. Now, on layer five, go to assign nets right here. And right now, BCC and BPP are on layer five. Does that make sense? Let's pick both of those and remove them. Hit OK. Go to layer two, go to assign nets, click ground and remove and hit OK. And OK. Now, can you see what I'm saying? Removing the nets from the cam plane took off that little X. So you can see the color, what color you're looking at now, right? Where it was hard before you had the X going to it, right? Okay. But right now it's not hooked up to any plane. That X is what hooks it up to the plane, and that's what we'll show you once we run a plot here. Okay? You see why we're there? So you can quickly see your colors. Okay, now, question Do I want this one over on this side or over on this side? Which one do you want it over here? Okay, see this color right here? That goes to these pins right here, right? This purple goes to this purple there, so don't get them reversed. Okay? So what we want to do now is just to bring this one down here. Whoops. We want to bring this one right down into this area right here. Okay? See how these are tied together right here? This is your powers, I think, right here. See how close your powers are? 
your grounds aren't as critical to be as close. And this one, pull him down into here. Now, if you need to rotate those to fit in with all your routing, fine. If, if you have routing there in the way, fine. Still put it up there for now. You understand that? I want you to at least get it up there, even if it's on top of traces for right now. Okay? Now, this connector is a through-hole connector, isn't it? Because you can see the two different shades right here, correct? Now, you can't see the shades on this, but would you assume these are through-hole too? Yes. Just because they have a solid color doesn't mean that you took the hole out of it. It's still there. Okay? So now, if I want to see what net it is, all I have to do is click on a pad right here and look down, what's that pad called? BPP, right there down at the bottom left. You see that on your screen? That's your power. Now, these two pins are automatically hooked up when I add that net to the layer, because they already have a hole in it, right? This does not have a hole in it. It's a surface mount pad right here, isn't it? So I've got to put me some exit bins on that, so that'll be tied to my plane. Does that make sense to everybody? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start routing there and coming out and ending with the via. And with that trace in the via, now it's tied, I can tie it to the plane. So the only thing you have to do here now is just double click here, come out here, right click, make sure your end via is end with the via. And just come out here and control click, put a couple on them here, put a few on them here, okay? Just like that. Can you see how that pad now is tied to a via that goes through the board and we can tie it to the plane we want it to be on? Does that make sense to everybody? Who doesn't understand that? Anybody? Okay, now, what I've got to do is I've got to do this also. That's a ground pad, right? But he's not tied to my plane yet, is he? So once I do this here now, He's, now I can get him to tie to my plane. So, let's say, and I'm surprised this hasn't happened too many times. As you start working, it will kick you out of being able to pick up pick certain items on your board. Okay? Okay, so control click. Not here. Control click. Control click will end it for you. So right now, if 
I come in here, see I'm trying to pick this here. I'm, I'm clicking my mouse trying to pick it, okay? But I can't pick it. I can't even move a trace. Okay? And a lot of you have probably had this problem, haven't you, where you can't pick anything. Is that correct? The way you have you fix that. You right click and you go to filter. Filter is just like turning layers on and off in any CAD package you have. So go to filter right here. Now you see none of these things are checked, are they? That means you can't pick anything. It has to be checked in order for you to be able to pick it. Okay? And that's why a few of you the other day had, when you drew that rectangle in there, you couldn't move the side of the rectangle. What happened was all these things, the edges and the corners were not checked. And so that's why it picked it as one entity and moved it. This is how you fix it. So what you want to do is just hit anything right here. So just go to anything right there and hit close. Now look, now I can pick things. So if you can't pick something, just go right click, filter, and make sure it's highlighted. And it'll turn it off by itself. So you'll be working on it and for 10 hours, and you might leave it for a minute, and then it'll shut it off, come back to work, and you have to build it anything, turn it back off. Okay. Okay, so let me hurry and hook this side up here. Never noticed this and it used to have three or four wheels coming out of it and out. Okay, let me ask you a question. To, to connect to connect to the thing. On small ones, maybe, I have one. Maybe I never worked with multi-layer glues. Right, but think about this now. If you want to ground something and you have a big old heavy wire there and ground it, you want to really stick that into a ground with a lot of beef, right? If you have a big pad no, and come out with saying, one, yeah. I'm just saying I've never seen it. Right. Before. And the reason why. That's right. And the reason why I do that now is this. I get more surface to get that grounded coming down with traditional beads. Right. Absolutely. So, you said that when you solder this, you will have like a bigger solder blob. So yeah. Speak, because the solder will flow to these beads right. on the sides. You will see solder outside of it. But if you, you have a nice bonus. stencil, if you have a nice stencil to put this on with, you won't have that issue. What do you mean by stencil? It ha it's a kind of an overlay with an opening. You squeegee the solder paste over and then stick your part on it. Oh, you mean that the solder itself will be a thin? That's right. You can control the thickness of that. Right. Yeah. And if you're doing it with a soldering iron, yeah, you little diff little off. diff little different story now. Right. Little That's different story. Right. Yeah. Okay. So are we good on those two big caps right there? Okay, now on this chip right here, we have a ground pin right here, correct? And we have two power pins right here. Are you with me okay on that? Whenever you have a power pin. You usually want a capacitor tied to that power pin, usually. The ground pins don't really matter that much. It's your power pins that are critical. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to move two of those small caps right over here. But what side of the board do they have to be on now? The back side, right? Because our part's on the top side, right? So we have to put the capacitors on the bottom side of the board. Are you okay with that? So, right now, if you
you look at this outline, it's kind of that grayish color, that color right there. If you look at these caps now, see they're a different outline. That lets you know they're on the opposite sides of the board. How many of yours are the same color? Any of them the same color? Okay, I'm going to make mine the same color then, okay? Okay, they're the same color right there, correct? So my outlines, see the outline of that and the outline of this? These, they're different, right? Okay, so if I'm going to put my caps um, underneath that chip, I cannot have them the same color outline because I can't solder the capacitor underneath a good chip, can I? Does that make sense? So we got to flip them to the bottom side, the cap. So all you have to do to flip them is click on here, right click, and how do I get it to the other side? Flip side. Flip side. Control F. See it change the color of the outline. Does that make sense? That's how we flip them to the bottom side. Easy enough? Anybody have a problem with that? Okay. Now, so um, again, this one here, I'm going to put down here. This one here, I'm going to. Well, this is the wrong box. So, question up. How do I grab this one now? Because if I click here. It picks that big one. I can hit the tab key and it'll cycle through. And then all I have to do is right click and hit move. And I'm going to put him up here. Does that make sense? And then this one here now can come right down into here. Now I could actually put him right there if I wanted to. But I'm going to put him about right there. Does that make sense? See, I moved those two caps underneath. It's more critical that they're closer to the power pin than the ground pin. So zoom in a little bit. So now, just come here. Now get the tab. Just make sure they turn. So click there. Get the tab key. There you go. And move. Okay, you can grab that underneath. And you want to put him in there to do this one here. Get the tab. Okay, now, again, this part is all surface mount right here, isn't it? So we got to drop it down into our power plane. So, let's come up here now, zoom in here. So, 
I can actually put a trace from here to here now and put a via right in the middle of it. And both those pins now will be tied to my plane Do that trace. Does that make sense there, buddy? So all I'd have to do is start from here. I'm going to type in W25, make it a little wider. Go from here. I could maybe go from here and right down to Okay. Why can't I end them right here? The blanks are top. One's on the top and one's on the bottom. You bet. So I could come over here now, hit W25. Now I could come over here now and control and end him right there and then start routing here and it'll actually change my, my layer. Does that make sense to everybody? Because we're on different sides of the board. So again, Start here, and maybe control click, and then from here, there. That's how you hook it up. You see the two different traces? One's on the top side, one's on the bottom side right there. Now, I'm going to actually move mine down here. I think everyone understands why I'm going to do that here. Okay. And if you don't understand why, go ahead and leave it and we can fix it later. Okay? Do you see how we, we route, we connected that side up, haven't we? So, yeah, you got it. So, so if you have a swim over here, you have a swim there, you have a swim there, there, now you got a swim up here, 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 and there. And then that shift all hooked up. So that's the concept we're working on. So now, so what we're going to do over here now is just come from here, come out here, control click, here, control click, here, control click, just like that. Does that make sense? So each pad on those caps now have a via coming off of it, right? They can sink into my ground plane, my power plane, right? Okay. So we still see our colors very easy, can't we? Okay. Now, problem is we have to do the same thing to that other chip. Okay. Now again, if you have, if you have to put your cap on top of traces, we have to fix it later. Perfectly fine for right now. I want you to carry through with me. Does that make sense, everybody? Don't try to be fixing all all the errors right now. I want you to do this so we can actually run a print so we can see how to print it out. Then you can go back and fix it up. Okay, so. Now, what I've got here now is I'm going to grab this one here and pull him over here and him over here, okay? Now, first of all, these are on the bottom side, right? So I'm just going to make it easy for me right now because I'm going to pull these over here now. Now, can that go right there? It can, can it? And remember, these traces are on the top side, right? So as long as these are on the bottom side, I'm okay, right? And I want to show you a little trick right now. Oh, there's a reverse. My That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. My reds are actually bottom side. That's fine. That's fine. Everyone can have different colors. Just as long as your top side ones, you know, you can place a part on the bottom over these traces here, right? If they're coming off the top pad, right? Yeah, by my, by my picture, I can confirm that, yeah. Okay. My, my, my top ones are pink. And That's fine. And your top ones are red. That's fine. I could go to setup, display colors, and see the traces on the top side right there. I could say, uh, I want them, this ugly color here. And click there, and guess what? 
I can change any color I want any time. So, and anyone can have any color. And a lot of times I change this multiple times during the design just so I don't get bored with it. That's Keeps me on my that toes. Be hard for to do That's why you figure. Files because colors can be different. Right. All the time. Right. But you see how I changed it? Set up just like color. Now I'm going to go back to a decent color. Uh, I'm going to use this one here. Does that make sense? Whatever you like, make it the easiest for you, okay? Now, I want to show you a little shortcut. I've, some of you have done this before, but I want to show you something that will make life much easier for you. Much easier. I want you to turn off everything but the bottom layer. So go to Setup, Display Colors, and uncheck these all but the bottom layer. Okay? So what that tells you now, if you want to straighten those up, you can go anywhere you want on that layer because there's no holes. You can go anywhere there isn't a hole. Does that make sense to you? So remember these two right here were kind of in my way, weren't they? Well, look, I could actually pull this down to here, and I could pull this down to here. Now, this is what I want you to see right here. If I want to start from here and reroute this right here, everybody understand what I'm trying to say? If I could have this coming down here, I'd pick up more area right here, wouldn't I? That's what I'm after. So all you have to do now is click on here, hit F2, and you can start routing him over here, and you can reroute it. That makes sense? You can see that I pulled out back one. Yeah, you can line things up with traces. Make sure all your views are in a nice straight line just to clean it up good. Okay. So, um, so that's how you do it if you want to just, you know, then zoom in. Let's get a little closer. Now just, just look at it. Don't touch it. So if you have one that you've moved and it's not on a 45, just reroute it on a 45 and it'll delete the old stuff and keep your new stuff for you. Okay? So now what I'm going to do here is just start here, hit F2, come down here, come over here, and double click right there, and I've got it right now, don't I? See, I cleaned up some space there, haven't I? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and now if I wanted to, could I bring this clear over to here and come in this back side here? I could if I wanted to, if I needed the space, right? It's shorter this way though, right? But if I had to have the space, I could. So now go back and turn on everything. Display colors right here. Let's turn things back on now. See, I've got quite a bit of space in there now, right? Because remember, I can put them on, on underneath these traces here, right? So this is my bottom one here, so I could go right in here, correct? This one here, I could go right here. Just like that. You with me there? Okay, so I come in here now. And say, man, I wish I could move that over there. Well, look, if I come here, hit F2, come down here. Back side here. Look, I've got space for a via here now, don't I? Now, you might have a little problem editing and moving these. Don't worry about it. You will get 
experts on it here before you know it. It'll be it'll come very quick to you once you once you get the feel of how you edit it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come from here, come here, control click, come from here, and then go here and click there. So he's hooked up now, right? Now I got to get this one hooked up here. But guess what? That's the top. Okay. So I could actually come from here now, come here, and maybe up to here. And then from here, I could come from here and into here. Does that make sense to everybody? So this side's hooked up, but my grounds aren't hooked up, are they? So I can maybe move him over to there. Now I've got a place to put this ground up here, right? We've got to find a place here now, right? So I just zoom in here, maybe grab, whoops, cancel, maybe pull him over to here, him over to here, and then come from here now and come here. So I found a little space for him. And then this one's a pretty easy one here because I can go from here and maybe right here. Okay? So all my power and grounds are hooked up now, right? Can you see why we gave you certain colors? If you don't, if you can't connect those up on the power pins, you can put two bits, one off the cap and one off the pin. If, but if they're close enough, you can use the same one to save the up here. Okay. Okay. Now, um, Okay, now we're ready to, we have two powers now on our power plane, our VCC and our VCC, right? Okay, so I want to show you how to work with those now. So, everybody's to this point, you, you understand how to put your V's in, right? Okay, now our VPP, our power plane is layer two, right? And our power our ground plane is layer two. Our power plane is layer five, right? Okay, so what we're going to do here now is this. I'm, we don't have to do anything to our ground plane. Our ground plane is finished because there's, no, there's only one net on that whole plane, right? But I want you to turn on layer five. So go to setup, display colors, Turn everything off but layer five. Now, you see our different colors there? Now, I'm going to make mine maybe a little different, okay? Different colors. So I'm going to go to View Nets. VCC right now is that color. I'm going to make VCC, what color do you want? Um, maybe. Red. We'll make it red. 
Okay, and VPP now, let's make this blue here. Can you see those colors a little bit better? Okay, I just went to view nets and changed my net colors. I've got a question. I've got a lot of lines in this one. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, now these are connections. So what that is, is when you went to view net, you took these here and you hit none. You forgot to hit none. Okay, are we okay on this? Now, we have colored dots, right? Um, you bet. got to do now is I just got to draw a 2D line and separate my colors. Colors on one side of the line, the other color on the other side of the line. Does that make sense? And everyone's is going to be a little different. So what I could do right here now is I could come over here to 2D line now, right click and hit path. Path is how you draw a 2D line, you know, you can Squirm it around any way you want. So I'm just going to go hit path. I'm just going to start right here, come down here. So I kind of want reds on this side and blues over here, right? So I can come here, I can come out here now, come down here, I got to come in between here now, right? I got to come down here, I got to come here, up here here and maybe there. Okay, now why did my line disappear? I'm on the top layer, right? So what I could do now if I wanted to keep that line is I could go to setup, display color, turn on my top layer. There it is right there, right? Now, if I didn't want to redraw it, look, I can click it, right click, select shape, right click, go to properties, and what layer do I want it on? My fifth layer right here, right? Then I can go back to setup, display colors, and I can turn off layer one, and guess what? I got switched over, I don't have to redraw. Does that make sense? So any line, anything you draw, you can go and switch layers. They, you just click it, and you can right-click, go to Properties, and switch layers. Now let me ask you a question. If you drew a line like this over here, and you wanted some vias in here, but you didn't want to use the layer command to swap layers, let me, let me show you how you do that. So I'm going to go back and go to Setup, Display Colors. I'm going to turn on Layer 1. We're going to do it right, let's say right here. Let's say I wanted that trace right there to be on an opposite layer. Okay? All I'd have to do is to click on it, right click, properties. Right now I'm on the top, right? I want it on the bottom here. Hit OK. And if I turn on the bottom, See it put two vias in for me and switched it to the bottom side of the board. That makes sense? Now let me show you another way of doing that same thing. Let's say you're over here and you want a little section through here so you can bring a bunch of traces through here. You have plenty of room for vias, okay? But you want an area for 
uh, traces on the opposite side. All you'd have to do is come here, right click, you can add a via there, click here, add a via here, and guess what? It separated that one little segment right there, and go to properties, and I can put him on the bottom side of the board. Does that make sense? So, if you don't want to use that L command, remember the layer command would switch from layer to layer to layer. If you don't want to do that, you can do it this way if you want to. There's numerous ways of doing the same thing. Okay, now we're basically finished here because we're ready to print this thing out. Did everybody get your bitch drawn around there? So let's look at layer four. Layer five, I'm sorry. Turn everything off of layer five. We'll go to select. Separated with pink and with blue, but right. So let's just go to the D line right there, up there. Right click, tab. So you've got to come up here now. Just like dot a line there. Coming down here now, maybe you want to come this way. Just come down here. Excuse me. And you can come over here now. See, I've got to come over here. Maybe come down here. And go down here. So that's got to these two right here, right? One has to be on the on this side, one on that side. There you go. And come around here. Now this red has to be on the other side, right? I did my bit. See, I just separate the colors one side from the other. Okay? Is that pretty easy to do a ditching now? If you can see the full dot, it's easy, right? But if you can't, it's pretty hard, isn't it? Okay, now, this ditch line only needs to be 15 thousandths wide instead of 30. Okay? So, how do we change the width of the line here now? So, click on any segment of it, right click, select shape, right click, properties, and change that 30 to 15. Okay? So what you just did is you took that one solid piece of copper now and you made two separate distinct voltages on that one plate of copper. We good there? So properties. Okay. Because all that is is you see how we separated that one big piece of copper now? You see what I'm talking about now? Photo reverse, right? Wherever there's black, there's nothing there, right? So there's going to be copper there. So where I have that 2D line, there's not going to be anything, so it's going to create that separation in my copper plane. Okay? So this is what we'll be doing on every board like this. And, you know, we'll go over this individually if we need to more. So if you don't get it, don't don't sweat it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put your name on it, and then I'm going to show you how to print. I'm going to show you exactly what happens here. Before I do that, what do I have to do with my two power nets and my ground net? Remember, I disconnected them from the plane cam plane, right? I have to add them back in, right? To see a Monday night. Okay? Because I need that little X in there, that white X, right? And if I took that off so I could see my see my things, right? I gotta add them back in because right now they don't know where to hook up, so they won't get hooked up anywhere. 
Does that have to do with the mold moving up the line? Yes. Yes, because it's going down yeah, there, but it doesn't know what layer to come out on. Well, it went up the line, but it's connected to it. Well, well, to the planes for sure. But they aren't to the plane if you don't tie it to the plane. It can't get to the plane. You mean in the drawing? Yes. Right. I'm, I'm talking about in real life. Right. Holes being copper lines. Right. Right. And so what I'm going to do here now is go to setup. Layer definition. Now, on layer two, we want ground to be here. So click ground, hit add, hit OK. Layer five here, we want VCC and VPP right here. Does that make sense? Hit OK and OK again. Now we have our thermals on there, that little X, and that's what's going to tie it to layers two and layer five, respectively. All the ground pins will come out on layer two. Right, I'm sorry, thermals. Right. What, what is this unit? Thermal? thermal is just a little barrel coming out, so they just call it thermal. Is that something that you can solder to? Or uh, well, you, it's on an inner layer, so you aren't soldering. It's just how it's connected up. So that copper now, and, and let me show you, you'll, you'll see, just hold on just a second, okay? This is the whole reason this doesn't make a bit of sense right now what we've got here, but when I show you the drawing, what it's going to print, you will see when I say a thermal, what a thermal is. So just... This, this makes sense, I mean, separating the drawing. Right, right, but now, but now, let's turn on all of our layers now. So go to setup. Display colors, let's turn them all on. Okay. Now, I want everyone to run through the print because the nice thing is, once you set up your print, you can hit save and then you can go back and fix it and you don't have to set them back up because all you hit is hit, run, hit, run. Click, run, click, run, click, can you, run. Can you remind, can you remind how to have your frame show up? Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Because, yes, thank you for telling me. The previous, the previous time, it didn't show up on okay. the layers. Okay. okay. So, does everybody have all your layers turned on? Yeah, but for some reason, my cast is. Your what? My cast is, I have to be these chips. I'm not sure at what point, but this didn't appear. Yeah, make sure you get all your layers turned on. Okay, put your name on it. So when you print it out, you'll see, because you're going to be printing out like four separate pages, okay? And you want your name on all four pages. So what you have to do now is I'm going to put my name right here, okay? Now, if you need to, you can put your name underneath the, the, the board right here if you want. Okay, it doesn't matter. So if you go up to drafting, you see the A, B right there, about halfway through this command line. Can we see the text right there? Who does not see it? Anybody not see it? Click on the A, B for text. Brings up the add free text. Just type in your name right here. Make it all capital letters, okay? Everything we do in here is capital letters. Now, see this size right here? This is the height of my text. In what units? In thousands. Thousands of, 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 thousands of centimeter? Thousands of an inch. Thousands of an inch. Make that 150. The 12 is here, okay. Now, do you see where layer right now? Does everybody have your name in okay? And did you change this to 150? Now, right now, if I hit OK, it's only going to put my name on the top layer only. So, if you hit this down arrow key right here and go to the very top, it says all layers. So, if you click that now, 
now your name will show up on every single layer you print out if you turn if you print text out. Does that make sense? So hit OK. And you can just stick your name right down there, okay? That makes sense to everybody? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually show you what the cam planes look like. And I think this will, will clear up a lot of issues, a ton of issues. Okay, but we're going to start with layer one, okay? So I want everyone to, I probably hit save. Save your board so you don't get a click uh, glitch and lose it. Okay, so make sure you hit save. Okay, okay, we good? We all ready to print now? Okay, here we go. Go to file, right there, file, and then go to cam, not cam plus, just cam going to bring up this document box right here. This is where we're going to define our four different print spots we're going to use. Okay? Okay, then delete, because you did it the other day, you've already gone through this. If you want to click on it and delete them all, you can re-add them if you want to. Okay, so first thing is I've, I've got to have every, all four boxes in here. So what do you think I'm going to do to put a line in here? Which one of these commands am I going to type to add something in here? Add. If you hit add, it brings up this. Add a document. Does that make sense? Now, the nice thing about what you guys have now, when we had it first came out, is it didn't have this box. And we had, I had to go in and I had to learn every single item and how it worked. But once we define it as a route layer, it auto-populates everything that needs to be turned on to that layer. So you guys don't have to. I had to make me a sheet, and I had to check, do I want this on this layer, this on this layer? And so that's how it used to be. They've made it so easy right now. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So, document name. Now, this is our top layer, right? You can call it anything. You can call it layer one. You can call it top layer. You can call it component site, anything. <coughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? You just need to call it a name. So I'm going to call mine component site <coughs> layer one. How's that? That's I, the what? Yes, yes. Try to do everything in caps because that's just a standard for anything in, in engineering graphics. Just a good habit to get into. Okay, you got, you got a name for it, right? See where it says document type? Hit the down arrow key. What did we do on layer one? We routed. See where it says routing right there? That's the only thing that has routing on it, right? So click routing. Of what layer? The top, two, three, four, five, or the bottom? The top, right? Hit OK. So it gives you an output file here. Fabrication layer is the top. And it tells you this is what it's going to print out. It auto populates it for you. You don't have to go in and pick those. Yes, yes, I need to, I need to, I need to do that. Okay? So, one thing I want you to be aware of is this. For a trace layer, how many things do I have right here? There's six of them. Does everyone see that? Just remember, when you're doing a trace layer or a route layer, you need six of those items up there. That's all you need to know. Now, this is what I would do if I were to create an electronic file to send out to a company. This is creating a file, physical file. But I want you to print it out. So what I want you to do is to hit print right here. Okay? Now, the next thing before you do it, see where it says preview selections right here? Hit preview selections right there. Okay? 
Thank you. Can I see your board? It's off the board, board and everything else, right? What we want to do is we want to move it up to the center of this paper and perhaps rotate it so the aspect ratio is more with the size of the paper. So to do that, all you hit is go to setup right there. Now let's cancel this one, do it that way. Let's uh, close right there, just hit close. Now, you see options right here? Click on options. Options right there. Now that's where your board is right now, down here at the bottom of the page. Does everyone see that okay? Now if I want to move it up here, see where it says justification here? I want it centered. It moved it up there. Now I probably want to rotate it, don't I? Orientation. I want to rotate it 90 degrees. See how I moved it up there and rotated it 90 degrees so it fits my paper more? You can do that on every single plot now. Okay? Um, if you, yeah, let's do it two to one. Okay? Just so you can see it better. See the scaling right here? Change that first number to two. So when it plots out, you'll be able to see it a little better. How's that? But if it's one to one, then it's going to be the actual, the actual size, size of the board. board. So a lot of times what I do when I print one to one, I go through and I actually glue these to, you know, the the um, framing shops have cardboard that's exactly the thickness of a circuit board. And so I get that spray on adhesive, spray it, stick it on, I cut it out, I drill holes, I mount my parts on it, surface mount parts especially. I put them on there to make sure they, they fit, they're orientated right. My clearance, it fits in my enclosure and everything else. I just do a dry stuff like that. Now with the 3D modeling, you can create a model and do that. You don't have to do it with the old fashioned way. But a lot of times it's easier to, because you get physical parts in. You never know if what you get in is what you really thought you ordered. Can 3D modeling just auto <coughs> You can. And so I just order samples in, put them on there. Oop, I, I should have made it a little bit wider. And so I, I did a different part outline than I thought, you know. Okay, so now <coughs> just hit OK and hit Run. Run is the same as print. So hit Run. Do you wish to generate? Hit Yes. And then hit OK. And it should start printing. That makes sense? OK, now for the cam plane. So now, see, I've added this in here now, right? So I want to add my second layer in. How do I do that again? Add, you bet. So add, what do I want this one to be? What was layer two? Ground plane, right? So I'm just going to call this ground plane. Hit document type. What is layer two? Cam plane. Of what layer? Two. Layer two. It generates an electronic file for me if I want to, but now count these. How many are here? Five. So for a cam plane, you have five items, right? For a trace layer, you have six. That's all you need to know. Okay, hit print right here. Let's go to options. We're going to do center. We're going to rotate at 90, and we're going to do it two to one. Does that make sense? Now, now remember now, hold on now, before we run this. These two pins are my ground pins, aren't they? The first row is my power pins, right? Same way over here. I have power pins, ground pins, right? Okay, so if we hit OK here now, and then we go to preview selections, and if I hit board right here now, there's a thermal right there. You 
see the white is all copper now, right? Remember we said the ground pins, and this is ground plane, right? This is the second row in. You see how this is all copper, and it's going in through these little thermals here to tie into that pin, that barrel coming through your board. That's how it's tied in. But notice, is the first row tied into this plane? No. These are my power pins, right? If I have my power pins tied into my ground pin, what am I going to have? Short. But when I say a thermal, that's what I mean, that little X. You see where that X is taking out part of that little ring right there? Let that copper get in? That's what a thermal is. That's considering that there is actually a hole in the tube. But we know it's a through hole part, right? Yes. But we had to do that for our B is also. How do we know what the diameter of the hole is? Because we already have it set up. We'll go through that we later. Don't know. No, no, no. We, we could find it if we did another drawing. I mean, is it possible to get a situation where the hole diameter is too big uh, where the white circle uh, before the thermals, but it's the diameter of the white circle? Yeah. Thermals, yes. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It renders them right. But, but you view it. You remember that black is the tolerance for offset for drilling, right? That's Actually, why you need that in there. Them useless. If it's copper line, it is still connected. Right. But we only want to connect to this one layer for a multi-layer board. Yes. That's all. For a double layer so board, it, that's fine. So layer five will see the thermals. Exactly. The, the power, exactly. The okay. So all these yeah. thermals are grounds, aren't they? Yeah, it's all on the bottom. Does that make sense? And that's a via that we drop through the board. That's how we tie that surface mount capacitor to our ground plate. Does that make sense? And you see, instead of just having this pad here tied through one of these here is tied through in 12 different places instead of four different places. So it's sunk in there more. Now, one thing that I found out is, do you have to put three or four on a big cap? Do you have to? No. It helps. No, it helps. It makes it better. It sinks it down and lets it run cooler, right? Less resistance. Less resistance, but do you have to? You don't, right? A lot of people don't do that. I just found that the more, if it's a larger cap, I put more vias on it to help get it so it sinks into that plane more. That's why if I have a small pad, one via, medium, maybe two, a large one, three or four. So the smaller, the smaller number of thermals will slow down the current. Right. Level. Exactly. The capacitor will charge longer and that may affect the smoothness of the, of the uh, current, well, current flow. Right. But you see our outline here also? You see our board outline is on the outside of here, isn't it? So for our copper ends right here, doesn't it? You see why we did that 2D line around there now? Okay, so um, let's close this out here. I'm going to hit run here. And yes. And then hit OK. So see, it adds my second line right there. Now, let's add our power plane. So let's add. I'm just going to call it power plane. <coughs> my document type is a cam plane. Of what layer now? Five right there. Hit OK. I have five items here, right? Hit print, hit options. We want to center it. We want to rotate it. We want it two to one, right? Hit OK. Mike, uh, can you go back to that window? No, no, options, options. Yeah, that's the options window. Um, close to the bottom. It says campaign layers generate campaign via 
thermals. So if you right. switch that on, it you wouldn't put any thermals on. You won't have thermals. Then right. But so what it'll, it'll do is it'll be a solid tie-in, not have those little spokes in there. It'll it sink the whole thing around that. Mm, yes and no. Yes and no. It all depends on the function. Okay. All depends. And then you use custom thermals. Right. Okay. So hit OK. And then hit run. And yes. And see it put this on here. Then we add. This is going to be the solder side. Side. Layer, uh, I'm going to put layer four. Does that make sense? Even though it's layer six, I only want this to go one, two, three, and four, right? Where we have two additional layers. Are you with me there? Even though we aren't using three and four, I can call it four. Because if I put six on here, the manufacturer's going to look for six layers. But and then I but get. You can't delete layers, you say. Correct. You don't have to use them, but you can. Right. You can delete them. So, but because but because we send a separate file to the manufacturer, if we send four files, the manufacturer will say four layers. So well, if but if you say layer six and you send four, he's going to call and ask where's the other two layers. Right. 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 No. Yeah. And so now this wants to be at the bottom right here, doesn't it? Go to print, go to options, let's center it, let's rotate it, let's do it two to one right here. Okay, and hit okay. And preview selections right there. That's what I see on that layer. So it lets me get one more chance to look at my routing. So it's going to find some problems in here. Okay. So see now, if I wanted to here, put these vias over here, I could have easily run that trace around here, right? <coughs> have more room here if I wanted to. But I'm not going to do it now. Close and run and yes. And hit OK. Now you see all four of them right here? If you come over here and hit save right here, and then hit close. So let's say you go all through that and you find something you want to change. If you want to move a couple of vias, I think you have to add a few more vias. You make the changes, you go back into file, cam, and guess what? You click here and hit run. Click there, run. Click there, run. Click there, run. You don't have to go through all those other settings to do it once you have it set up. If you hit the save button. Okay, does that make sense?
Right now, this one here in the center can't be touched at all, right? But this one can. It has those little thermals in there. That's what it's called a thermal. That's how that can be tied. So it's tied there because we assigned it to that layer. That can't play. So it's closed. You can see that you have your set setbacks also. You have 30,000 flying around there, right? So if um, we know everything's okay now. These two are closed, and this one is closed. Now we can add this into this here. So we can do our setup. I'm going to set up the way it does this. Okay. Off the edge. Do you have a. Oh, you did the ETC PC on the other two. It was just the opposite, right? So we get to remove these two here. This is for auto routing, but it's not for hash routing. It's not. No. If you have an auto router, you can actually go out there and go horizontal and see where the vertical is. If you have horizontal and vertical, you can just stop off and sever what that's for. It doesn't really matter. So you can define certain directions on certain layers for the auto router. Well, that's I'm, what this I'm is all about. Not as good as I used to be. No, no, that's why it I haven't even talked it about it. Doesn't affect us. That's why I haven't even mentioned it. Like, you know, They're on the right lane, and we, we didn't want to see the ditch here, did we? Okay, so if we just close, now you can hit run, yes, and then hit open. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, you need to change the options. Yeah. But the options are all set there. Oh, okay. You just you can always have sessions with the same. Thank 
Except for these three things. No. You see the thermals on the paint on the planes too. So actually the the polypore ideas don't fit together. They end up being uh upper and as part of <laughs> but I've got I've got a whole mess going on. You got to move those out too. Or if you need to move the location here, you can move the location here. Yeah, see, there's maybe a little bit of space too. Here, you know, I've got I've got some kind of strange measure going on here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Property. 